Alan Murphy, Submission Radio, sitting alongside Norman Park ahead of KSW 39. Norman, how are you? Good, mate. You alright? Yeah, I'm good, yeah. Not too bad. So, there's been a lot... healthy and on the recovery on the men, so it's good to see that, mate. Uh, cheers. Thanks. I appreciate that. So there's been a lot going on lately with you. Um, releasing the UFC, fighting in ACB, fighting in Bama. Um, the fight with Andrew Fisher didn't go as planned as in your head. You said you were lack of motivation. Then the fight with Redmond, you said you were lack of motivation for that. Like, talk to me. Tell us where you're at now. Um, I'm at a good point. I'm at. Uh, I'm just. Uh, I'm just looking forward to the to the moment here, to the fight. That's the only thing that's really on my mind. Not really what happened in the past events. That's already passed. You know, it's. Uh, I've learned a lot from that. So it's. Uh, <laughs> here we are in one of the biggest, if not the biggest, show in Europe, and I'm glad to be a part of that. And uh, I just want to thank the KSW for giving me the great opportunity to. You know, they, they could have picked someone. Uh, an easier matchup for their opponent, but they know this is a tough match. They need to test them now this time, like a real test. So I feel that's something I bring to the table, and I want to make sure that I, you know, I've got every capability to take this belt 100% with the right performance. Uh, the right performance, I know I can. That I'm capable of. I can. I, I have this belt sitting right here now in front of you. So it's a it's a good time. So you spoke before um, about lack of motivation. So your motiv do you think your motivation's back now? Yeah, I think it's you know it's um, you know I've still been training since a pole fight. You know, still been chipping away. My knee was a little bit sore, but I've still been chipping, doing something. It's not like a stop. Whereas when I was released for the USC, I stopped for like I trained what seven weeks for the Andre Fisher fight. Where I was up to that, I did absolutely nothing for the whole what six or seven months. Not one thing I did. Just sat and I thought I'd get blitzed, thought I'd just partied and just kind of cleared the air a wee bit, you know, um, and got over that whole UFC thing. But here I am in a good show and uh, getting paid good money to fight. And where everyone keeps talking about when are you going back to the UFC, I have no intentions to go back to the UFC, not one. If you put a UFC contract here right now, I'm not going. I'm happy fighting for KSW, you know, and they see that, I appreciate that. So, and they appreciate the fighter, so I'm happy to be a part of that. So wh why wouldn't you go back to the UFC? I don't know, no, it's, uh, there's a lot, people, there's a lot, you know, really, you're just a number there, that's it. You know, I, I respect the UFC, when they look after all the fighters 100%, but it's just a straight business, that's all it is. You're, you're, you're the best friend. You're their best friend when you're winning, like, you know, and you lose a couple or they don't care if it's a decision or not, you know, you lose a couple, still a loss in your record. From a business point of view, boom, you're gone, that's it. Goodbye. And it doesn't matter how nice you are to them or how how you pull you took every fight that that, that you know they offered you without hesitation. I could easily turn around to a lot of fights and just says, nah, I don't want that fight, but I don't want that fight. But I wanted to fight so I never had no protection from any company, and I, I never intend to be protected by any company. I'm a real fighter who fights everywhere, and I've always did that, so here I'm fighting in enemy territory again. <clears throat> and um, and that's the way it'll always be. I class myself as a real fighter who goes and fights anywhere. And, and, and that's it, so. So do you think KSW is a promotion you can grow in? Oh, 100%. 100% they, 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 they talked about coming to the UK again, they talked about coming to Ireland for the first time. Um, so so there's there's something for me to feed off. Uh, sitting there, the opportunity is right there at my feet. And at the same time, there's no pressure me getting into this fight, absolutely. I don't care if I lose this fight, not one bit do I care. You know, because I'm going to be getting paid good money anyway. <laughs> so it, it doesn't, it's not like, it's not like when, when, when you're fighting for promotions, you get a show purse and then double win bonus. You know, it's like, why don't you just give the fighter the money, the, the full purse to fight? Um, and that takes a lot of pressure off fighters, so I don't have that pressure going into this fight. I don't care, so when you less pressure, less stress, you get to see the real fighter. You get a fighter, put him in there, when 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 everything's, everything for it, for going for it is against the wall, it's tough, you know, you kind of hesitate and freeze. It's like, you panic, you, you want to, you try your best to win, but you're trying that hard, you're losing it, you know, and that's the way it is, but here, 
there's no pressure. You take all that pressure away and hand that guy a whole shitload of money or whatever. Whatever it makes him happy, or whatever it takes the stress away. You say money don't make you happy, but I tell you what, I buy you whatever the fuck you want. and pays all the fucking bills, does all that there. Then there's less stress, you know? So people that say that there, you can wear that money into my bank account. <laughs> no problem. So, uh, this is what it's like getting into to this fight here. There's no pressure. It's a big show. I, I, I'm aware it's a big show, but there's more pressure on my opponent than there is me, so I'm feeding off that. So you're fighting Matthias Gamrat for the KSW title. Does the title mean anything to you in this fight? Does the what? Does the title mean anything for you in this fight? Oh yeah, I would love to have the belt. You know, I know the, the whole hoo-ha with Bama the last time, but it's okay, you know. Um, it's all right, you know, never worry, it's okay if you miss weight, you're just going to get fined 50% of your purse. You, you, maybe you don't know that if you look through the contract, but it's okay, your opponent will get 20%, you'll just lose 30, it'll go back to us, it's all right, never worry, you're still fighting. Fuck that. The belt was on the line, I was like 0.5 away, but here I'm in the hotel where the skills, the official skills are up the stairs, I've got my own skills here, so there's, there's no, like, a, there's no drama there. I guarantee I'll be 155 on the bottom, if not bef below it, so I've never missed weight before ever, so, and there's 50% of my purse taken clean off you for, for, for something that was not all my fault, they've got to take some blame for that, so, it's, um, and that was a big hit, you know, so, it's, uh, see what happens here, so it's, uh, yeah, the belt, I would love the belt, the KSW, it looks beautiful, um, it's nice, I think it would look nice around somebody else, they need, they need a new champion now. It's fine to lose, like, no, I've got five defeats, you know. I've never been stopped in, what, seven years or eight years, so it's close fight, so it's, it's all right to lose. You know? What's the worst? That you're not dying. <laughs> you're still alive, like, real, realistically, you're still alive, so it's, it's, I says that to my opponent. It's fine to lose, it's okay. I've beaten undefeated boys before, so I can make you a better fighter, and then he's like, oh, you feed off losses because you get beat all the time, and I was like, mate, Come back, go fight the guys who I faced, right? The close decision losses I had. Go fight them boys, then come back and say the same shit to me. Because I tell you what, you'll be sitting with the same losses right there and then. So, uh, he knows it's a tough fight. And I hope he takes it as a tough fight. Because I am a tough fight for anybody. Hey, he told me there during the week that you're not his, he doesn't believe that you're his toughest fight. Uh, what do you so think? So who's his toughest fight then? Did you ask him who his toughest fight was? I did not. So. Yeah, but you should have asked him who his toughest fight was. You should have tapped into him and says, name me one guy you face that's got any sort of decent takedown defence or heavy top game. You should have asked him them questions because if I was a reporter, I would have asked him that. Every reporter here knows that. I'm sure, like, you know, everyone here, I got loads of Polish people contacting me on Facebook saying, you're Matessa's toughest fight. You can win the belt, you can beat the belt off him. They don't need to tell me that, but it's good to see that, that they recognise that, because they, they know it's real. It's not fake, this here, this, this fight's not, this is a real top level fight, those two. But <clears throat> he knows, he knows, uh, he knows this is dangerous, very, very dangerous, and he knows that whenever I seen him face to face out the back after when the camera's away, I just said to him, man, I'm your toughest fight, don't lie to yourself. Don't get your little girlfriend Boris to stick up for you and try and translate shit, because you know what I'm saying. Um, you know I'm a tough fight. I tell you what, if you get me on my best day, oh, it's a bad, bad night, and that's a fact. I can beat anybody on my best night, anybody in the world on my best night. I know that, so and fuck what everyone else says. So what's the best way to victory in this fight? Um, the best way to beat this lad is pressure, um, box, use bo my boxing that I've got. Believe in your boxing, believe in your hands, and uh, stay heavy on the takedown defense. Nice and relaxed, no pressure. When there's pressure, you panic, you gas out quicker, you you get um, you panic. At the same time, people don't see that stuff, you know. People see no, they just look at the fight and just see our oh, boy just ah right. They never seen the weight cut. What you fucking put your body through to make the weight? They just see two boys fighting there. You're on the ground. Get up. <laughs> Train for six months and go into a cage and fight, and then see what it's like. You know, total different ball game, but. The key to the victory is boxing and takedown defence. I feel that's the way to beat this lad. There was one thing that you said or uh, said in the build-up to the fight that you were the decision king. Now before uh, you did say that. Yeah, I know I said that. Yeah, yeah I know I said that. Yeah, I, I, I've always gone with decisions. Yeah, I understand that. There, um, I've been beat by some 
good boys, you know, very, very tough matchups that I've, uh, I think on my better day I could beat these guys, you know, and if you look at some of the fight, even with the Rustam Kovalov, who I feel he's my toughest matchup I've ever faced, no one in my division, not even any UK or Irish fighters faced anyone as tough as hit wrestling as him, you know, and it's a fact, you can all say this and that, but I've faced the toughest out of every one of them, <laughs> every one of them, and that's without a doubt, there's no favourable matchups for me in the UFC, nah, they're all tough matches, but in the Rustam Kobolov fight, there was a time in that fight where I could have won it. I could have maybe laxed in a body triangle and just stayed there and tried to take the decision in the third round. I says I want to try and close the show and try to choke him, but it ended up to be the wrong, the wrong uh, move. And then ultimately his wrestling overpowered. But this lad here's got no. I don't believe he's the wrestling like Rustam Kobolov has. No chance. Or. He's trained with Gleason T-Bow, he knows how strong he is. He knows he got fucked about and trained with him, so he knows this is a tough matchup. I want him to say this is a tough matchup, but he's lying. He's lying to himself, which is making me even more angry because I know that when we're in there and he feels that there's levels to this game. And when I say that, you look at uh, <clears throat> who's the young guy that UFC was pushing, Yaya Rodriguez, he was all good, flicky flicky, flashing kicks and stuff, like you get people like this, they'll promote them and push them, entertainment, and then he calls out one of the best, uh, if not the best featherweights, and I believe is, um, is one of the best featherweights in the world, Frank Edgar, and what did Edgar do to him? He just smashed him, you know, and there's no other better way to put that, he completely smashed him and just let let him know who the boss was, let, let the young lad know who who, um, what levels there is to this game. And I says it before the fight, it says, Edgar's going to close the distance, stay away from the flashy stuff, close the distance, bump, take him down, finish. And he did that, so there's levels to this game. I feel that like I've got the upper hand in this fight.